Yo, what's up? It's someone that's someone, and welcome back to another story mix. Today with me, I'm joined by Ananka. He has a channel making trip reports, other readings, other psychonautic content, a bunch of content you guys will mess with called Ananka's Bazaar, so make sure to go check him out. What's up, everybody? Brothers, sisters, psychonauts, and seekers of truth, it is Ananka's Bazaar. And first off, I would just love to give a big shout out to someone that's no one for allowing me to do this collaboration with his channel. I've been listening to him for a couple of years, and he's actually the person who inspired me to start my channel. So for me, it's just crazy that we're doing this collaboration right now. But um, enough of the fangirling out. If you like my style of reading, if you like listening to trip reports, sacred texts, mythologies, and legends, I would definitely recommend checking out my channel. And with all that being said, let our story begin. But today we have reports, as requested, of experiences where cockroaches popped up. Not as common as spiders, but common enough. And this is quite the mix too, as it isn't just the Lurians, possibly suggesting there may be something mystical about them. And I do want to know that some of these are taken from various points in time, so the quality will vary. But let me know what you guys want to see next, we'll be having many more collabs to come. So, without further ado, let's dive right into this. Bugs all around me. I left my boxing lesson that night to go home, and midway home, I thought to myself that I'll probably be bored and I should experiment with Benadryl. I have done it in the past at 400 milligrams, and that was a very interesting trip, so I decided to add an extra 150 milligrams. I head to my local Rite Aid and buy the Benadryl. I am not sure if the lady knew what I was up to, but she just went on with her business. I get home and dose myself a few hours later. Start. I dose myself with 550 milligrams of diphenhydramine and resume talking to a friend on Discord. 30 minutes in. I do not really feel anything major at this time, but I am starting to feel a bit weird. It's like my hands feel very lightweight and they shorten in length. I remember feeling this on my first trip at 400 milligrams, so I know I was coming up. One hour in. Hallucinations are starting to form at this point. The corners of my room became darker, and some objects would become larger if I stare at them for some time. One hour 20 minutes in. The hallucinations have kicked up a notch, and the drifting is more profound now. I also start to see inanimate objects become autonomous. I have a marble spider hanging off my ceiling, and it would start to move like it was alive. Two hours in. Shadow people are becoming more apparent. Tall ones. They're about eight feet tall. They do not look hostile. They seem to not be aware that I exist. Two hours, twenty minutes in. At this point, I am hearing my mother and her friend chatting loudly downstairs when my mom is sleeping, and it's about one to two a.m. It sounds so real, though. I even heard one of them coming upstairs. I also start to see tiny spiders on my arm if I stare at it. 2 hours 45 minutes in. I stare at my right forearm and I start to see my fist looks like a toy that's been disconnected from my wrist. Then I saw a large red bug crawl on me, looked like a mix of a cockroach and a ladybug. I start to see papers on the floor move on their own and slightly hover in the air whilst vibrating intensely. Three hours in, I start to see spiders on my curtains, small ones, the same color as my curtains. After a while, they start to crawl and some launch onto me. The spiders only occur when the room is dark. When I look at myself in the mirror, I start to see thorns growing out of me and my eyes start bleeding. I look completely deformed in the mirror. Music sounds amazing, it just has this extra emotion to it and it sounds faster due to the drowsiness. 3 hours 45 minutes in. A clusterfuck of spiders on my curtains now. One giant one the size of my palm and hundreds of small ones. Crawling over my curtains and some launching at me. They go away as I turn my mini lamp on. 4 hours in. I saw a ghostly figure of a firefighter. I saw a ghostly figure of a firefighter with a blocky right arm walk through my door and towards me. Disappearing once it got close. 
I also see hands behind me in my peripheral. A toy dinosaur. My brother starts to move its head and tail. It looks so real. Four hours, 30 minutes in. I am overwhelmed and I decide to go to sleep and the restless leg syndrome is the worst. I also seem to have a very weird internal hallucination. It's like I'm in a park and I can fly. However, the people around me seem very real and I have full on conversations with them and I open my eyes and realize I hallucinated an entire park filled with families. I thought I was actually there. Five hours in, saw an old female at my door. She had a smile on her face, a lovely one, and started to change the position of the light switch all over the wall. I also noticed my door opening on its own and would close once I blink. Meanwhile, when it is open, I would see a shadow person with glowing eyes that aren't so bright, moving around the hallway. I do not remember the rest, but the hallucinations seem so real. I eventually fall asleep and wake up feeling like shit. Today, I have a 2CE chirp report for you. The title of this chirp report is, Who Said an Overdose Was a Bad Thing? and was submitted to Irowid in 2007 by the user J$. With all that being said, let our story begin. Being someone who avidly tries substances for many different reasons, I jumped with joy after hearing a buddy of mine had acquired two grams of this substance from some Canadian lab or something like that. Since me and a couple of friends were the only ones who had ever heard of this substance before, he was going to give us some for free to try, which he gave us roughly 100 milligrams capsulated into 10 milligram increments. I started by dissolving 15 milligrams into a bottle of water, which only gave me some nausea. The second trial was insufflating 10 milligrams, which gave two things. Number one, a feeling like I had been hit in the nose with a baseball bat. And number two, the notoriously awful body load. At this point, I'm really starting to question whether I had been screwed or not. The only thing that kept hope is that many people had broken through on less than me and had had some really far out experiences. So the following weekend, I had one of those real enlightening fuck it type breakthroughs and did what Terence McKenna would describe to be a heroic dose of 30 milligrams up the old snooter. This turns out to be nothing more than mild tripping compared to what happened a month later. After a month of nothing, I decide to trip on 10 milligrams one night in my room, planning that I would be sleeping by 2 at the latest and up for school at 7. Well, I don't know what happened, but I instantly knew this trip would be different. I line up 10 milligrams and snort it, my eyes feel like they rolled in the back of my head, and I fall onto my bed. I immediately regret what I had done and fear death. After five minutes, I was sweating like crazy and could not stand the nausea or body load. At ten minutes, I feel the purge coming on and run to the bathroom. The walk to the bathroom is very difficult, and the walls were shaking and seemed very alien to me. While I was hugging the toilet puking, I started to trip very hard. I was certain that death was just around the corner. I spend about another ten minutes in the bathroom, regaining myself, and decide that it would be a good idea to regain myself by laying down. I always feel safer covered up laying down. I could not regulate my body heat at all and figured that this was a sign of an overdose. For the next 45 minutes, I fight off terrible ideas of death. I loop Franklin's Tower by the Grateful Dead to take me to some happy place. To my surprise, this works very well. The song plays out in my mind, 
and I feel sunshine on my face. I decide to stop laying down and sit up and see where this can take me. I would like to say that even when my mind was in better shape, I still felt the body load, which was still very unpleasant. But aside from that, I feel immense joy and the need to communicate with other human beings. So I sign on to AIM and talk to my partner in crime. He tells me that I'm the only person that can manage to ramble over the internet. I then decide that it was time for some personal discovery and log off. By now, I'm sitting in the middle of my bed with my legs folded meditating. This is one of my fondest experiences of any sort of psychedelic. I feel the world's energy flowing through me, and it makes me feel complete bliss. After a while, I stop and lay back down. The visuals never got very exciting. Just a lot of breathing and bulging walls. Some lines would wave with vibration. But I close my eyes and see a giant cockroach walking across my vision. Typically, I hate them and would have been very terrified. Except I understood that this one was important. It made me feel like there is things that were here before me and will continue on after I'm gone. After all of that, I just watch TV for about two hours until I can finally sleep. This may sound lame, but I have never got as much enjoyment from TV in my life. The program seemed to be about me and almost performed right there in my own TV. The point is, it was very nice to come down. When it all trailed off, I finally got some sleep. The next morning, only four hours later, I felt very lightheaded and in general just out of it. Any sort of mental activity required a lot of effort, which was wonderful considering I had to spend the day at school. Overall, I think this was a great experience and a great substance. I do think that it was maybe a bad batch which gave me the irregularity in amounts and quality of trips. I also believe that my final encounter was definitely an overdose, in the sense that it was just way too much unexpectedly. Electric Love Hello, this is a trip report from when I mixed 4-HO-MET with MDA some time ago. It was pretty crazy, and I hope the report is interesting, but it was pretty hard to explain what happened that day. I had always read and heard about people mixing intactogens with psychedelics and having beautiful, awe-inspiring experiences filled with love and beauty. The classic candy flip, hippie flip, nexus flip, you name it. I thought about which two substances to mix, and I decided on mixing the research chemical 4-HO-MET with MDA. I had recently discovered this research chemical from finding it on an online chemical store and doing quite a bit of research on it. I was drawn in by the reports of people experiencing beautiful visuals, euphoria, and a clear headspace. Upon trying it myself a few times, I came to realize that all of these reports I had read online were quite accurate. Because of the lighthearted nature of 4-HO-MET, along with the amazing visuals, I knew this would be a great mix with MDA. My friend had been wanting to try something like MDMA or MDA for a while, and since I still had some left from a few months ago, we had decided on doing it one day in a forest near his house. When the day came, my friend and I canoed into a clear spot in the forest with a large clearing and many rocks overlooking the water. Right as we got to the forest, we rolled up and smoked a joint, then set up our tent before going rock climbing in a nearby cave. After about three hours, I decided it was time to take the 4-HO-MET as I wanted to take it around an hour before we took the MDA to avoid still tripping during a potentially draining come down. I mixed the 4-HO-MET powder with iced tea and quickly downed the whole glass. It tasted bitter and chemical-like, but it wasn't too bad. After about 10 minutes, I felt the 4-HO-MET in my stomach, and my breathing seemed a lot more detailed. I could feel more sensations 
on my skin. This was accompanied by some pretty bad come up nausea, but it went away fairly quickly. As time went on, the body high was getting stronger and stronger. I felt as though I was floating out of my body, and I can hear and feel every little thing. I kept taking deep breaths, and I could feel the overwhelming euphoria of the air entering my body. I looked at a tree, and it quickly turned purple and started warping in a wave-like fashion. As I was staring at this tree, all of the trees in my peripheral vision also started warping and turning into different colors. They were duplicating all around me. At this point, the forest was alive with electricity, and the beauty of nature was showing itself to me in all of its glory. Knowing I was obviously tripping balls, my friend recommended that I take my shoes and socks off so I could walk barefoot through the forest. I didn't end up putting them back on until the next morning. By that point, about an hour had passed since I took the 4-HO MET, and it was now time for my friend and I to take the MDA. Since we didn't have a scale, we broke a 400 milligram crystal into thirds. We each took a little bit more than a third, so we would each be taking around 150 milligrams. After we ate the MDA crystals, we went down to the lake to go swimming while we waited for it to kick in. When I got down to the water, the entire water had this purple electric pattern over it, and the trees in the distance looked like paintings that were morphing into each other. No more than 20 minutes later, the MDA hit me with full force. With almost no warning, the entire earth shook, and everything started zooming in and out. I looked down at my legs, and I was amazed to find that they were way too small for my body. Everything in the distance looked way too far away or way too close. I looked at the trees, and there were no patterns to them, just dots and eyes, and a rippling effect that looked like oil and water. Everything was ten times brighter, and the entire world was breathing and expelling love into every single thing on earth. The trees were waving and dancing, and the water was a purple sea of geometric patterns made out of pure energy. It hit my friend about ten minutes later, and at this point, we started playing music out of his speaker. I carefully created a playlist for this occasion, as I wanted music to be a big part of it. Music while under the influence of a psychedelic is always an incredible experience, and this was no exception. The music took control of me. My body was uncontrollably moving to the music. I didn't even notice it at first until I looked down at my body, and it was swaying back and forth. My hands were snapping to the beat of the music. I didn't recognize this new body I was looking at. In fact, I could not even remember who I was. I didn't know what a modern human was anymore. All that I knew was that I was a being, a primal ape if you will, who was possessed by the spirits of love and dance. However, I didn't know that I was a part of a beautiful world, a beautiful universe. It was beautiful, and so was everything else. My ego was completely gone, and I was one with everything. I was a part of everything, and everything was amazing. Life was perfect. During all this, my entire body was tingling with a beautiful euphoria, nothing like I had ever felt before. I felt as though my body was tingling with an electric love and projecting it to everything in the universe, and everything was projecting it back into me. It was a never-ending cycle of love and understanding. I could feel every single atom touching my skin, and it felt amazing. The euphoria was so clean and so pure. Around an hour or so after taking the MDA, my friend and I decided it was time to smoke a joint and a few bowls. I don't smoke weed very often, so my lungs usually hurt quite a bit after smoking, and I cough a lot. However, when we smoked, the smoke felt like air in my lungs. Because of this, I was compelled to smoke a lot more than I usually do, and we got very high. However, it was not like a normal weed high. It just made the effects of the MDA and 4-HOMET much stronger. After smoking some weed, we decided it was time to explore this new alien forest. So, with our shoes still off, we started running through the forest. Every single foot placement was perfect. We were flying through the air, dodging trees and branches and jumping off of rocks. I was the most in touch with my body that I have ever been, and I felt like a monkey flying through the forest. I felt so alive and so full of energy. We then ran, sprinted, 
and jumped back to the spot where we had set up our tents. We were talking about so many different things. Life, love, family, the fact that you can keep cutting something in half an infinite amount of times, bugs, how much we appreciate each other as friends, and the list goes on. The most notable thing we talked about was bugs. I have always had an irrational fear of bugs. They always gave me a very uncomfortable feeling. However, when we were sitting down on that rock by the water, we lifted up a smaller rock and out came around 15 little black cockroaches. Instead of backing away and feeling uncomfortable, I exclaimed, Those cockroaches are so fucking cool. For the next 15 minutes, my friend and I talked about how cool bugs were and how there was no reason to be afraid of harmless bugs. To this day, I can confidently say that my fear of bugs is completely gone, and I am now aware of how interesting those little creatures are. Before we knew it, the sun was setting, and the MDA was beginning to wear off. We decided to make some colored lights by putting tape over flashlights and coloring in the tape with a marker. It actually worked, and then we set out on a night walk through the forest with our colored lights. This walk had much less energy, it was more of a relaxing experience where we had more deep conversations about our lives and the things we appreciated. When we got back, we built a fire to warm up and cook food, but since we were coming down from a rather intense experience, we had absolutely no appetite, nor any motivation to cook anything. We were cold and exhausted. For the next hour, I melted into a hammock as I was waiting for the rest of the MDA to wear off so I could get to sleep. We were enjoying sitting by the fire and warming up until we heard rain start to fall. The rain started falling harder and harder and we could hear thunder rumble in the distance. So we quickly put all of our stuff into the tent and then tried to fall asleep. Since I did not even have enough energy to smoke any weed, sleeping was rather difficult as I was still quite mentally stimulated. Not to mention sleeping in a tent is not the most comfortable thing. Somehow, I did manage to fall asleep, but I didn't sleep long as I was awoken by the sunrise at 6 a.m. I woke up feeling absolutely drained of energy and emotion and couldn't move for a few hours. I still had no appetite, but I knew I had to eat something, so I choked down some eggs and a mango. I went home still feeling exhausted and had a good long sleep that night. The next morning, I woke up feeling better than I have in a very long time. My life seemed so much better, and I was so much more apprehensive of everything I have. Everything was going my way, because I was open to everything. This experience was one of the most intense psychedelic experiences of my life, even more intense than my 7 gram mushroom trip. It demonstrated to me how truly incredible life and the world is. All right, everybody, the second trip report I have for you is on everybody's favorite delirium, something I have yet to try, but I do have growing in my garden. So when I do have a trip, I'll make sure to write a report on it. The magical and deadly Dechorus Dremonium. The title of this trip report is Out of Control and was submitted to Earwid in 2000 by the user Jada. With all that being said, let our story begin. This is my experience with the Dechora, or Angel's Trumpets as we call them. A few years back, I had heard of the Angel's Trumpet. A few people I had known had done this and overdosed. But me, being very curious, told some friends and they went and picked some flowers. We boiled them and made a few gallons. We then mixed the juices, diluted with a little water with tea or Kool-Aid. We would drink it by the cup. It was the weirdest thing I had ever experienced. I was sitting in my room after I had done it. I then started hallucinating. I saw a monster come at me with a spike sticking out of its head. I saw a huge bird trying to peck my eyes out. I saw millions of cockroaches pouring out of my bathroom wall. 
I saw an alien when me and some of my friends walked to the corner store. I was having conversations with people who were not at my house, and we were in a whole other setting, for example, at school. I don't remember half of the things that happened. My brother and his friends said one night when I did it. They came in the house and saw me pouring coffee and hot boiling water and milk and sugar all over the kitchen floor. They asked me what I was doing, and I replied, making coffee. I do not even remember this happening. When drinking this, after a while, it gave me the worst cotton mouth imaginable. My throat was so dry that it actually hurt. We were only about 14 or 15 when we had discovered this. As a joke, we made this guy drink 32 ounces of the angel's trumpet. Ear would note, please do not dose others without their knowledge. This is extremely dangerous and uncool. While this situation ended okay, it could have turned out much worse. He was at our house. His father came and picked him up. Next thing we know, his father called my parents and said that the guy on the angel's trumpets walked back to our house, and he came looking for him and found him passed out in our front yard. He then brought him to the hospital, which is near my house, and he had overdosed. He did come out of it, though, and I talked to him a few weeks later, and he said that he saw a lot of the same things I had seen, especially the insects. He said I was in his room at the hospital, talking to him amongst many other things. I really would not suggest doing this. It's really visual with all of the things you see, but it can be so dangerous. You don't know what you are doing or where you are. It is very frightening when you think about it. Also, if you do too much, you can overdose like a few of the people I knew who did it. And if not, you can end up making coffee on the floor or doing some other stupid things. I would stick to pot or other drugs you can control. For this, you cannot control. DPH at a friend's house. I have dabbled in the realms of DPH a few times before, but nothing came close to this trip. All my other times, I just got tired and felt attached to the bed. Point and simple. In an attempt to meet Hatman, me and a friend, whose name will stay disclosed, went to the local Dollar Tree to pick up allergy pills with the intents of tripping on them, as we have done so before. After the purchase, we walk back to his house and wait until his mom falls asleep. Fast forward to around 10 to 10.30 p.m., we ration out the pills and begin to partake. After the first 10 pills, I knew there wasn't any coming back. 23 pills in total later, we begin to do as normal and play Xbox. About 30 to 45 minutes later, he started to feel the effects and have slight visuals, but I lacked all the telltale signs of tripping. I heard voices of people from what seemed to be the 1800s and would shush my friend so I continued to hear their conversation. Little did I know, nobody was there. Shortly after that, I was hit with a wave of sheer visuals, seeing spiders everywhere. Me and my friend sat watching the spiders and laughing at each other when we saw the spiders running around everywhere. I have a terrible fear of spiders, but on the DPH, I felt no fear at all. Rather, I felt curious and euphoric. The big spiders were translucent, but still noticeable while the small spiders on the wall were dark and abundant. I take a peek down the hallway and am astonished by what I see. I see a gremlin crawling around the midst of the dark hallway in front of me. I continue to stare for what seemed to be a few seconds, but it turned out to be 30 minutes, as I was told. I take another peek out of curiosity and see Hatman, but a very angry and demonic Hatman, indeed. I see a woman and another dark figure alongside them, all seem demonic. I didn't realize at first, but those were the people I heard talking from the 1800s. Top hat, suit and tie, with a rustic looking shave that fit the description of people from the 19th century. 
I stare at them for what seemed to be, again, a few seconds, but turned out to be hours. They were screaming at me and crawling up and down the ceilings. By this time, I was very antisocial and I couldn't keep a sentence going. I would just stop in the middle of speaking. My friend was quite silent as well, but we still managed to explain the effects we saw to each other. After a few hours of that, probably around 4 a.m., we decided to head to bed. I was suddenly awoken. I looked down to see cockroaches crawling on me. I felt very hot and sweaty, so I got up and grabbed a water bottle. Walking was a very, very hard task at this time. I then decided to go to the bathroom to rinse my face and all that. I found myself going to the bathroom for extended periods of time while on DPH and continued to keep going every 10 to 15 minutes. I am clueless on why. As I entered the bathroom, I was lacking deaf perception, so I couldn't find the light switch, but I didn't care. I then got an idea, a strange one. I was so hot that I poured a water bottle on my head while lying in the bathtub, clueless on how I got there. I felt possessed by Hatman and his friends because they all seemed demonic. I felt like a zombie. About an hour later, his mom awakens from hearing me stumble around in the bathroom. She opened the door and sees me covered in water without the lights on and then, very worried, asked me what happened. I replied with just going to the bathroom. After a scary five minute convo, she lets me go back to bed but still worried of me. She had a good clue that I was tripping but didn't have a rock solid claim. As I awake in the morning around 10am, I again see cockroaches all over me but I knew that it was all a mind game so I didn't mind. His mom was up by the time I was, so she called me into the living room to sit down and talk to me about what happened, but again, I said I was fine. That same day, I headed off to work at around 1 p.m., feeling like a straight zombie. DXM Nightmare Trip this was my first tripping experience and undoubtedly my most intense and horrifying. I am positive that nothing I will ever do from this point on will compare. At the time of this story, I was 15, male, weighed about 115 pounds, and had only experimented with weed and alcohol. Set and setting were not ideal. In short, I was suspended for school for punching a kid who had been picking on me. This led to me having anxiety about going back to school and having to face him and his friends who resented me for it. Being naive, I decided I would spend my days off from school tripping, despite my terrible mindset. I ended up attaining two bottles of Robitussin gel caps. I believe in each bottle there were 20 pills containing 15 milligrams of DXM as the only active ingredient. This equates to 600 milligrams of DXM. My mom was leaving for work while I was home free from school and bored out of my wits. Luckily, or so I thought at the time, I had snagged some entertainment in preparation for a lazy day. I'd always wanted to trip, though I could never get a hold of any psychedelics. Robitussin seemed to be my best bet. I began taking the pills three or four at a time, spanning from five to ten minutes. After consuming one of the bottles, I was feeling very little effects. I had a slight energy rush and body buzz. It was a very slight feeling of pins and needles and vibrations. Not too pleasant, but not all that unpleasant either. I decided to just down the second bottle, taking all the pills at once. I wanted to trip after all. Having read that it was bad to trip on an empty stomach, I decided to make some waffles. What I didn't realize is how difficult that would be. As I took the waffles out of the freezer and popped them in the microwave, the pills from the first bottle started to hit me harder. The body buzz became more intense and slightly unpleasant. I felt pins and needles very pronounced all over my body and my motor skills were beginning to suffer. The task of melting butter, cutting the waffles, and pouring syrup suddenly seemed a daunting task. So instead, I took the waffles out of the microwave and began chowing down, not bothering with a fork or knife. They tasted like paper and were very difficult to chew and swallow. And the act of eating plain waffles with my hands made me feel like a savage. For some reason, this thought made me paranoid. I only managed to get half a waffle down. Needless to say, eating on DXM 
is not enjoyable. Giving up the thought of eating, I ventured to the bathroom. It had been an hour since I ingested the first pills and I was already noticing some perceptual changes. All the objects in the bathroom suddenly seemed much smaller. It felt as if I were a giant towering over them. The pins and needles were now very intense and almost unbearable. I went back into the living room and came to the realization that I was in deep trouble. The body buzz was only getting more intense and my heart began to race a little. Not knowing what to do with myself, I decided to lay down on the couch and try to calm myself down. I felt very trapped and confined. Waves of panic rushed over me as my heart started racing faster and my muscles began to get stiff. The only way to put it is every organ in my body felt like it was dying. I couldn't sit down any longer and I began pacing around the room. Everything seemed small in size and alien. There was not too much visual distortion or hallucination at this point other than size being different. It just felt as if I were in a different place, like a different dimension containing the same objects. I was caught in a loop of laying on the couch and feeling the horrific body load, then jolting up and pacing around the room only to lay back down. The room was beginning to feel like my own personal torture chamber that I couldn't escape. Of course I panicked and called my mom. When she picked up, I realized how difficult it was to talk. I could only get a few words out at a time because my whole body felt like it was vibrating. I said something along the lines of, Ma, um, can talk good, ni, hospital, can you? She interrupted me saying she was on the way and boy did she sound furious. This made me feel a little better, but not much. I paced around some more and at one point I broke out in pure terror. I started screaming hysterically and saying, the doctors are coming! The doctors are coming! It wasn't pretty. I was losing my mind. It seemed like hours and hours before she got there, but was probably only 20 minutes. Telling her what I had taken was very hard to do, considering I could barely talk. Eventually, after much sputtering, I was able to get the message across that I had taken two bottles of robogels. She called a pharmacy or poison control number or something to assess the danger. I found it insane that she had to make sure I was dying. While she did that, I stood there and stared blankly at the TV. It was an MTV reality show. I believe someone on the show was wearing a mascot costume, but it was the most grotesque looking thing I had ever seen. It was like a combination of a bear, cockroach, and alien. A human-sized, disgusting, slimy abomination. The color of it was a darker black than I thought possible. I knew this thing could not actually be on a reality TV show. It didn't even seem like it could be in someone's imagination. The realization was terrifying. She finally got off the phone and told me to go upstairs and change because I was wearing skinny jeans and they would cut my circulation. My body was practically numb at this point so taking off my pants was nearly impossible, and putting a baggier pair on was just not happening. I struggled for a minute before my mom came in, and, embarrassingly enough, she had to pull them up for me. We finally left the house, and I was nearing my peak. This was probably about two hours since I took the first pills. I had very little control over my bodily movements. I started doing things like running my hands up and down my legs, rocking back and forth, and tilting my head around. It was all I could do as the painful vibrations ran through me and my heart attempted to leap out of my chest. I felt like I was dying, and I probably was. I also experienced something I would call a type of ego death or partial ego death. I knew who I was and understood the fact that I was me, but it just didn't seem real or possible. It was as if I was viewing all my life events and recalling memories from a third person view. I wasn't sure whether these things actually happened and that I was who I really thought I was. I kept on asking my mom if I really punched that kid in the face. While this was going on, I also got the sensation that my life was being broadcasted somehow and that everyone knew what I had done and were disappointed and thought lesser of me. I kept on lasping in and out of consciousness throughout the car ride. When I would come back, the car would appear to go extremely slow like 15 miles per hour, and then immediately 
pick up speed until it felt like we were going 90 miles per hour. This cycle continued the whole way there. When we finally got to the hospital parking lot, I noticed the music from the car radio. It sounded very fast and loud with metallic alien voices. The music itself was not of this universe. It sounded like alien instruments playing notes and chords born in another dimension. It permeated my whole being with incredible intensity and I have no idea how I hadn't paid as much attention to it before. Walking to the hospital from the car was no easy task. I couldn't feel any part of my body and my vision was failing. My mom had to halfway carry me as I stumbled my way into the waiting room. I can only imagine how that must have looked from an outside perspective. I don't remember much after that. My vision was almost completely gone. When we went to see the doctor, all I could make out was his outline and behind him, nothing but white. It seemed like I was in heaven and he was an angel. My mom told him what happened and I felt like her voice was coming from inside of me. And when the doctor talked, his voice seemed to surround and envelope me. It was like the conversation between my mom and the doctor was really happening between me and God. I could almost describe it as comforting, but I'm not sure that's the right word. It's like the feeling of peace before you die or experiencing every emotion at once. After that, I blacked out. I woke up once in the hospital bed, still tripping, and there were several nurses at my side. I panicked and tried to sit up, but they held me down. I looked at the clock on the wall, but felt as if it were only there for show, because I thought all time had stopped. I didn't think I was in reality anymore. Upon waking up, I was convinced I was locked in a room in a part of my brain. The feeling can be described as being surrounded by an immense labyrinth and you're smack in the middle of it. I fought with them more, attempting to escape my labyrinth before finally surrendering. I think I slept for a day before waking up the morning after. Oddly enough, I felt very relaxed when I woke up. Could be due to the mini coma. In summary, I can definitely say I will never take DXM again. It was a traumatic experience and I was lucky to make it out alive and sane. I have since done acid and mushrooms and can say there is absolutely no comparison. DXM is its own thing entirely and should not be taken lightly. Stay safe kids.